Joseph Booker for answering my very, very many questions about lots of different things. And also Rick and Linda for all the work that they've done in the art. So my work this semester was on the properties of photostellar outflows in the Orion Nebula. So one of the most important things is actually where we got the data from. It's from a radio telescope called APEX, which is a collaboration between three different institutes. The Max Planck Institute for Radio Astronomy, OSAL Space Observatory, and the European Center Observatory. Um, it's located in, apologize if I butcher the name, La Roche and Jean and it's at 5,105 meters. It's used to study cold dust and gas in the Milky Way galaxy. And our map size is <coughs> 8.5 arc seconds by 8.5 arc seconds, and beam size of 1956 arc seconds. So selecting our sources was the most important part, really. Um, it was based on the average spectrum that we got from them and also the channel maps that we made based on these spectra. Uh, it turns out, I'm not sure why, but all of our sources ended up being class zero sources, or class zero protostars, an example of which is shown over here. And while this isn't actually in the Orion Nebula, you can see it looks about the same. This one's actually in the Taurus region of the sky. So a class zero star is, or class zero core star, sorry, is when the core starts to collapse. It has very low mass. It has 10 times more surrounding dust than most of, of the other classes of proto stars. It's very young. Um, you can't detect it at less than 10 microns. And one of the biggest things to find a class zero source is that it has a presence of molecular outflow, which is what we were studying. So getting started, this is just what I was looking at pretty much every single day. This is a nice, beautiful program called CLASS, which was a pain to learn, but once you did, it was very, very helpful. Um, you would start off using spectra like here, and that's actually the average spectra that was taken. Um, all of these average spectra you could put together into a data cube. And once you did that, you could look at all these different channels and all the spectra at different, different times. And through that, you were able to create the channel maps. So those are the type of graphs we would look at initially to try to find sources with good outflows. And one of the best examples of this would have been with HOPS 373. So as you can see here, you have these gradual inclines that go steeper and then come back down in the same way. And that's a good, a good evidence of, that there's probably an outflow of this source. Once we saw evidence of these, we would make a channel map of each. As you can see, there are different lobes. And they come from different directions, indicating that they're probably from the same source. Um, the blue box is indicated of where the blue lobe starts and the red of the red lobe. So we would say from here to here would have been the blue outflow lobe, and from here to here was the red. So to calculate the mass, uh, the first thing you would have to find was the column density of the upper part. Uh, theta is just a bunch of constants together. Uh, just to make things a little bit simpler, then you have the frequency squared times the integrated intensity, which very nicely was calculated by class, so you didn't have to do that by hand. And then you divide that by the Einstein 8 coefficient of the upper level. Um, the upper level being 3 for the 3 to 2 transition and 4 for the 4 to 3 transitions. Then you would take, the, you would find the total density over the entire thing. Um, so here again, you have the upper level column density. And GU is 2J plus 1, being, J being the upper level transition again. Um, QT is actually the partition function, which we had values for um, through a database. EY is the energy of the upper limit. And that's all divided by E, the constant, to the Boltzmann constant times temperature. Um, 
which we assumed would be 75k based on other research. You could vary it by a plus or 30k, it would only change by 10%. It wasn't significant, so we just left it at 75. And then you could finally calculate the mass of the outflow, which was mu a constant times the mass of hydrogen times the area of a singular pixel over the total, times the total. And here is the raw data for each of the 10 sources. Um, they were all around 10 to the negative five or six solar masses, which is pretty consistent considering how different each flow would look. Uh, so here, we tried comparing comparing the luminosity to the mass, since things should be directly correlated. As you can see, there really didn't seem to be any sort of correlation between the two. Um, while it was interesting, it, it really didn't mean much, which I guess is interesting itself. So the the two outliers over here that have the much larger mass were HOPS 3.1. And we think this is due to, to, it might actually be multiple sources and not just one. Um, as you can see from here, it actually looks like it, the outflow is coming from two different sources in both the blue and red directions. So we think that the fact that we saw a larger mass for both is actually very good. It supports that hypothesis, though obviously it's not conclusive. Um, and we calculated the outflow force. Uh, CI was the inclination factor, V max being the maximum velocity for each that we took, so 25 for most of them. And then it was the sum of, that's actually an integral of the integrated intensity for each different channel over the size of each. Um, and then we have the raw data for each of the forces for each. This is actually the, the wrong units here. It should be solar masses kilometers per second squared. But all of these were around 10 to the negative fourth. Just, I, I still find it interesting that they were around this, even within a factor of 10 of each other. Any questions? Okay. Uh, can you go back to your uh, CO channel map? Yeah. Um, um, this one? So, yeah, yeah. Um, so it looks like there's structure to, that's the CO3 to 2 transition, right? Yes. So uh, is that fine splitting that I'm seeing there, or what's what's the cause of the peak and then sort of a another peak, but it's much less. Do you know that? Um, which peaks? I'm, I'm not sure. Well, in, in the intensity versus frequency plot there oh, for the CO, is. yeah. Um, I'm actually not sure. There were about half of them looked like that. OK. Um, most of them didn't look very nice. We didn't focus on this part because we're not entirely sure what comprises that. It could be the envelope or the disk or all that combined. We were just focused on from like here or wherever just the wings, okay. Yeah. And what about the previous plot? There was sort of, was that just a data artifact to the right, or? This one? Is that something real on the right of that plot? Uh, I asked about that because I was really curious too and I was told to ignore it. <laughs> so, um, it might be evidence of another source, but again, we were just looking at the wings of this one in particular. Okay. It, that actually didn't end up having any difference about the mass or the force. Okay. It still gave uh, answers that were just in the same. It was actually about the median for the source. Okay. Go back to the other slide. Presumably that curve and the curve in the one before. In one of the panels, I mean, this is an example panel. Those go back to the, what, what's actually what are the, I can't read anything here, what are the, uh, what's the vertical axis? Uh, this is the, it's the intensity versus the velocity. Or are you talking on this one? On this one. Uh, yeah, uh, these, this is integrated intensity max. 
that it's just at different positions. So um, these are these are all different velocities, velocity channels. Different velocity channels to yeah. the right. I mean the whole. Uh, it goes axis. from negative five to twenty-five going negative that way. Negative five to twenty-five. Yes. And then you're plotting the intensity. So that's a little little uh, bandwidth in this diagram. It's from. Um, yeah, it, it well, I mean, one of these pictures, one of these pictures is a little bandwidth in this diagram. Oh, yes, yes. So, but seen over this plane of the sky. Yeah, we actually uh, smoothed this one a few times to get that, because if you use this plot to get all those channels, then you, you couldn't even see what was going on. They, they were so tiny. So, you said this, all of this was right for plane? Century. Yeah. All of the sources were class zero, or you had some class one sources? In there? No, these were the, all the ones we selected were actually class zero. There were class ones that we could have, but they didn't have these nice um, channel maps. Do you have any idea how the outflow compares in the class one sources to what you're finding here? I'm not sure. No. So clearly, I mean, what what is the age of these objects? Uh, they're very young, I think. I don't remember exactly. I think it's uh, hundred thousand or something like around, that. Yeah, around there. I don't remember the age range for class zero stars. Could be an equation. The yes. Yeah. So this beta is beta is what here? Uh, I don't remember. It, it was like five different constants. That they could be put together. Now, you're using CO3 to two line for all this calculation, and typical quantum density for this will be equal to. I used uh, 3 to 2 and 4 to 3. But do you worry about the, to be an optically thick line for this? Because if it's optically thick, do you have you apply any corrections for this? No, we, we assumed that they all were, it was just an assumption. We didn't have any kind of correcting factor for it. It isn't in the wings. The wings are thin. The center peak is thick. That's why you get those bumps, self absorption. We don't it's, worry about that. What is the total mass of the outflow, right? Yeah. Um, I took the I took the mass for each the blue and the red. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, already entire. It's, you don't have the velocity in there, so it's not mass per it's not outflow rate, it's the actual mass of the column of material. Over over <laughs> velocity. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the, the units, mass, is not from mass, units are mass, not mass per year. Right. Sorry, say that again? The units are mass, yeah. not mass per year. Outflow rate is the actual outflow rate. Right, yes. The chief outflow rate, whatever A is, the Einstein coefficient, correct? Yes. And that is one upon second. Um, not that A. Let's say up here is the Einstein coefficient. Yes, but I'm looking oh, at the this, this one? Yeah, that is. That's the area of a singular it's pixel on the map. Oh. It's a, yeah. All right. Well, let's thank Amanda again.